Good evening, everyone. Hello, Swayam, Hariyom. Hariyom. So, I believe we are on at the poem, The Holy Water. Cindy, is your voice up to reading this for us? Brother Shankara, I don't think we finished the kind face poem. Page 34, a kind face. We stopped at the small one. He asked for charity last week. Okay. He just made a note, sir. Do you know what page that's on? Page 34. Yeah. A kind face. Kind face. I think I think we we did read that, although I'm open to reading it again because it is a nice poem and I think it's good for the times. Yes. <laughs> but I do so I agree. But, but I do believe we did read it. So. That was my memory too, but I wasn't gonna argue with Haima. She's so organized. So um so do you feel up to reading it? Yep. Okay. He asked for charity. God came to my house and asked for charity. And I fell on my knees and cried, beloved, what may I give? Just love, he said, just love. That's not the kind that, face. Yeah, that, that, that's the one before a kind face. Oh. That's yeah, yeah, that's on 30, 30, kind oh. faces 34, right after it. Mm. All right. The kind face. Joy is the greatest cleanser, and it is the greatest testimony to our faith. Toil with happiness, my Lord once said to me. God sent a servant on an errand through a dangerous part of the world. The servant, having received in hand what God wanted delivered, turned to the holy and said, my beloved master, do you have a final instruction? And God replied, a kind face is a precious gift. I'll read it again. Please. Joy is the greatest cleanser and it is the greatest testimony to our faith toil with happiness my lord once said to me god sent a servant on an errand through a dangerous part of the world the servant having received in hand what god wanted delivered turned to the holy and said my beloved master do you have a final instruction? And God replied, a kind face is a precious gift. I love the first line, joy is the greatest cleanser. I think of, of really happy laughter. Mm -hmm. And um, I have these, I live on a street with a lot of little kids and they all play together. And I've gotten to the point where I can tell which of the kids it is by their laugh. Mm -hmm. And they just... Um, yeah. 
And when we laugh, it's like everything it's, falls it's, away it's, that doesn't need to be there. The line about the testimony to our faith. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like Father Thomas Keating said, if you truly trust God, you don't have a care in the world. So of course you would be joyous. It's a wonderful state of being. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. So I am, I think you read this holy water poem last week, didn't you? Uh, I read it in another class. In another no. class, okay. Yes. Would you read it again here, please? Sure. The holy water. No one lives outside the walls of the sacred place, existence. The holy water, I need it upon my eyes. It is you, dear, you, each form. What mother would lose her infant and we are that to God? Never lost from his gaze, are we? Every cry of the heart is attended by light's own arms. You cannot wander anywhere that will not aid you. Anything you can touch, God brought it into the classroom of your mind. Differences exist, but not in the city of love. Thus, my vows and yours, I know they are the same. I I have just peeled the skin from the potato and you are still contemplating its worth, sweetheart. Indeed, there are wonderful nutrients in all for God made everything. You join our community at birth. With your father being who he is, what do the world's scales know of your precious value? The priest and the prostitute, they weigh the same before the sun's immaculate being. But who can bear that truth and freedom? So a wise man adulterated the scriptures. Every wise man knows this. My soul's face has revealed its beauty to me. Why was it shy so long? Didn't it know how this made me suffer and weep? A different game he plays with his close ones. God tells us truths you would not believe. For almost everyone needs to limit his compassion. Concepts of right and wrong Preserve the golden seed until one of God's friends comes along and tends your body like a divine bride. The holy sent out a surveyor to find the limits of its compassion and being. God knows the divine frustration whenever he acts like that, for the infinite has no walls. Why not tease him about this? Why not accept the freedom of what it means for our Lord to see us as himself? So magnificently sovereign is our lover. Never say on the other side of this river, a different king rules. For how could that be true? For nothing can oppose infinite strength. No one lives outside the walls of this sacred place, existence. The holy water my soul's brow needs is unity. Love opened my eye 
and I was cleansed by the purity of each form. This is a deep one. There's so many points that are. Well, what are the points that that uh, that rise for you? What are the uh, the most important points for you, Swayam? Um, I'm uh, reading it quickly in my mind. Um, Um, this one, a different game he plays with his close ones. God tells us truths you would not believe. For most everyone needs to limit his compassion. So what does it mean, limiting his compassion? Are you asking that question? Yes. Well, most of us are simply not willing to admit that there is nothing outside the walls of this existence. There is no dark power that exists outside the walls of this existence that creates suffering. So whenever we see suffering, we know that that too is at least this is the way it's understood from here. We understand that that too is a result of the divine having created existence. There is no he he says it's it's his holy water he needs on his brow is unity. Seeing everything as the one. Because otherwise there's a contradiction in this poem. Mm -hmm. That the infant is, is never outside the, the gaze yeah. of, of the divine. And yet the poet says, I suffered before my eyes were opened. So the only way that that can be reconciled is if one has compassion for everything, all activities, all, all results. That's how it seems from here. That's, that's, the answer to your question. Anyone else have a, 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 a an idea they want to share about that? I do, because um, it seems like it. It seems like it relates back to um, where he says on the previous page, the priest and the prostitute, they weigh the same before the sun's immaculate being, but who can bear that truth and freedom? Mm -hmm. So a wise man adulterated the scriptures. Every wise man knows this. And I've been thinking so much lately about the um, gospels that were left out at the like roughly 300 years later. I mean, during that 300 years, there were lots of different groups who were Christians and they used different texts. And some of them used the Gospel of Thomas or Philip or Mary Magdalene. Um, and then at 300 years later, you know, this patriarchal group decides, yeah, we're going to leave these out because these are too weird. These are just too much for everybody. I mean, that's what I'm, they, they didn't say that. They said that they were inaccurate or they were whatever, but you know, the, in the gospel of, of the beloved companion, Jesus says, I come from that, which is undivided. Exactly. 
And that's, that's like, that's mind blowing stuff. You can't control people with that. <laughs> no, it can't be a state religion. And that's, that's uh, why I feel that those gospels were eliminated. I mean, they weren't just, it wasn't, they weren't just pushed aside. They, there was every attempt made to destroy those. Yes, they were declared heretical. And some were destroyed, but others were copied and hidden. And um, But they're starting to come out and people are actually starting to embrace them and, and say, hmm, this is a different way of looking at things. Yes. And uh, so as far as the limiting compassion, it's, it's just... Again, it's like Krishna showing Arjuna his true forms or form or whatever. <laughs> um, it's too much. Yes. Uh, at least it was at that moment for Arjuna. Maybe well, later he would have been ready for it. But I think things are revealed to us as individuals when we're ready and us human, human beings as a species as a group when we're ready and and it's frustrating to god because god kind of wishes it didn't have to be like that either but well that's that's that business about the surveyor mm -hmm. you, know? yeah. Yeah. you cannot survey the infinite <laughs> it's a contradiction in terms Anyone else? This is a long and involved poem. And there's a lot here, as why I'm pointed out. Oh, brother, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so in the beginning of the poem, it says that uh, uh, anything uh, you can touch, uh, God uh, brought it into the classroom of your mind. What does this mean? Well, the classroom of your mind is one way of talking about why we have a mind so that we can experience that which Atman has created for us. Now, this business of Atman as being a different word than Brahman it points to the fact that each of us is unique, utterly unique. We share attributes and traits and so on with others, but fundamentally we're unique. So the classroom of our mind, anything that exists that comes into the classroom of your mind, the reason for the word classroom is so that we can learn from it and grow from it. That's what a classroom is for, isn't it? Swami Vivekananda called the world a gymnasium so that we can become more capable, more skillful, more adept at the game of life. So the and there is nothing that can be, I mean, as it starts out, the poem starts out, there's nothing outside the walls of existence. And that is exactly what is meant by Satchidananda. There is an existence absolute. Uh, there is only existence and anything that exists partakes of this existence. But it, it isn't it isn't Brahman, it is Shakti or mm, Maya, which is what this poem is talking about. It's talking about our experience of Maya and how you know, the fact that we try to limit it in any way is frustrating for God. But it's God who sent out the surveyor.
Y'all are going to have to carry on without me for a few minutes. Uh, I need to uh, go to the restroom. There isn't any way around it. I just can't uh, sit here and uh, and uh, not uh, tend to this. I'm sorry, but uh, it isn't it isn't as if you can't carry on. <laughs> There's lots to be said and lots of people to say it. So uh, I'll be back when I can. <clears throat> Liam, you looked like you were going to say something, but maybe you weren't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I wanted to look through the uh, poem a little bit more before. Like, I, there is something I, I do want to say, which. I think is just kind of interesting in terms of, you know, the, well, just like this line, which is repeated of, uh, you know, no, no one lives outside the walls of this sacred place existence. And, and then the, the second line of uh, the, the holy water I needed upon my eyes. It is you hear you each form, which, you know, uh, Brother Shankara just mentioned about this being about uh, Maya, but um, yeah, just, I thought what really kind of caught my eye about it is this idea of, uh, you know, him using the, this, I, this kind of metaphor of the walls of this sacred place existence and that kind of caught my eye because from you know my understanding of, of existence is that you know that it, it, it it's wall less right like there you know it's the like I guess like the you know the Buddhist belief is like you know the space you know everything and the nothingness um, or, or, or like what was being shared about you know you can't survey the infinite and I just thought it was interesting that he uses the terms like, you know, the, the walls of the sacred place existence. Like it, it just kind of seems like a, uh, I guess a little bit of like a paradox or, you know, like him using that um, metaphor there. Yeah, I'm wondering what people, you know, what was the belief at the time that, uh, let's see. Yeah, 1182 to 1226 is when he was living. Um, so maybe at that time, people had more of a thought that there was an end <laughs> to existence and outside of that was uh, maybe certainly not existence as we know it. But, you know, I think that some physicists now think that space actually ends. I mean, that it doesn't go on forever. Um, so, yeah, it's really, that's, you know, those are those really kind of crazy mind-blowing things to think about uh, and to, to actually call it a wall. You kind of see a little courtyard with all of existence in it. And, uh, yeah. It seems to me, though, because he starts out that way, and it kind of puts everything in a container. But then it talks about, you know, the infinite and trying to survey the infinite. And um, I wish we could just ask him, you know, what did you mean? You know, um, I keep going back to that same um, same paragraph, like the words, like he says, for almost most everyone needs to limit his compassion. You know, why would we need to limit it? But then the previous sentence is a different game he plays with his close, when, close ones. God tells us truth you would not believe. So in a way, is he kind of saying the same thing like Vivekananda says in Gyan Yoga that evil has to sort of exist 
And um, it's only when one, I guess, works hard to realize the truth that you see the unity. And until then, the right and wrong, it says concepts of right and wrong preserve the golden seed until one of God's friends comes along and tends your body like a divine bride. So if he plays a different game and tells some people truth that maybe the those that are not as you know out of the ignorance may not believe. I know it's kind of complicated, but yeah, it always seems to be. Go ahead. You know, that's what I was going to say. That maybe it means that until you remove the ignorance you're going to see the right and wrong and, you know, that difference. And then God sends his friend to come and tend, tend to the body and then reveals the truths. Yeah, I, I think that... Um that's that makes sense and it, it seems like another way of saying you know what we receive from god is what we're ready for um right you know he plays a different game with his close ones um there are things you would not believe most people need to limit his compassion i think what that means the compassion is not just um limiting how nice god is to you <laughs> but more the compassion is not just about you know the sort of kindness from god but more god's revealing truth to each person and you know we're ready when we're ready for what we're ready for. And for most of it, most of the people on the planet, that's not usually a whole lot. Because further down it says, God knows a divine frustration whenever he acts like that. So. Um, I have one question, like, why does God want to play games? I think that's a Brother Shankara question. <laughs> I was just wondering, you said, why does God want to play games? Is that what the question yeah. was? This is a different game he plays with his close ones. Is that from 35 or 36? 36. Okay, 36. Okay, I see it there. I think it's just a figure of speech, but, you know, there are other scriptures and things that talk about the game, you know, Maya being this game um, that mother plays. And I don't really like that metaphor or concept um but that's not uncommon for people to think that that's what the divine is doing cindy i'm thinking i'm thinking cindy probably because of our karma like good karma bad karma god is within us so we're playing all those roles you know paying the good karma and some of us pay the bad karma you know for what we did Maybe it's implied, probably, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I may not be true. That's how I implied it to my head. Yeah. I, I think was thinking along the same lines, actually. And that's why he plays the game that's suited to each one's to overcome the karma. Yes. That makes sense. I and mean, God is within us. The divinity is within us. We pay our karmas, so one has different situations in place on us. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that the idea of like game too is is like 
you know, because like, you know, when, when the way that I think we use games a lot, it's like, you know, in especially in um, like the, the United States and the West, like, you know, it's something that like children do that's, you know, something kind of, you know, kind of, you know, frivolous or kind of like pointless or, or something like, you know, like, like maybe like sports related. So it's like when I hear that word game and, and think about it through that context, it seems kind of like a weird um, word to use. But when I think of games and like, you know, just kind of as like a set of circumstances that have like a certain set of kind of rules or conditions to follow by, right? And then it kind of makes more sense to me in, in that, you know, what, what in this um, context and where it's being used, like, not, you know, not like a game, like, a, you know, oh, yeah, we're trying to win the championship or, you know, run, play on the playground. It's like a more of, yeah, just kind of a set of scenarios, right? Like, and um, kind of like the, uh, I think a lot of, um, theater groups you know they call themselves like the, the su such and such players right because that's like you're playing a role and you know a lot of these events that we experience in like duality they're just kind of like uh you know if you kind of you know when i think of it that way you know yeah they are kind of just like a game it's like okay you know go to work nine to five you know it's like the game is like okay go to work nine to five do this or you know, that many hours and, and, you know, and then the game's over for the day and then you go back, you know? Sometimes it could be a test. God could be testing us. It's a, it's, you know, sometimes you wonder why am I, maybe he's testing for my endurance and patience, see whether I'm capable of handling this. So I question myself whenever there's something blocks something I'm doing. Oh my God, maybe it's a test for me. That's the type of game, you know, divine games, divine tests. That's how I am understanding. I guess we all have <laughs> implied meanings. Yeah. Well, it, you know, that that resonates with me and what was mentioned earlier about, you know, like the classroom of the mind. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, right, like what's the purpose of experience? I mean, from what I've, my understanding is, you know, so, you know, the, we can, uh, so the soul can, um, can grow through the experiences that we have in yes. in the physical form. And so, and that's the thing, it's like, you know, the, like this idea that of like, you know, of, of sending out the survey or, and building the walls is that, you know, like um, I, I think Brother Shankar just said it before about how, you know, experience can't happen without duality, right? If there's no duality, then we can't have experiences and without experiences, then we can't uh, learn or expand, you know, you know, learn anything because it's just there's no experience. Um, I also, in that same paragraph, I something that stood out to me was um, after the for most everyone needs to limit his compassion, where it says concepts of right and wrong preserve the golden seed until blah 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 um that it's it's like people who are unable to uh process hi a higher truth about the divine need concepts of right and wrong like the ten commandments that sort of thing uh, uh rules for behavior it, or, you know, in the case of Buddhists, it's not rules, it's a way of living and being, but it's still um, a set, got, you know, set of, of guidelines for, for living, which you do until you get to the point where you don't need those anymore. So it's like the concepts of right and wrong preserve the golden seed and the golden seed. I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm feel like it's, you know, God truth, the truth of the universe, God, God's absolute truth, Satchitananda, whatever, whatever you want it to be, but it's preserving that the concepts of right and wrong, the, you know, behavior 
so that we don't all destroy each other and everything until we get to that point where I don't know what it means. One of God's friends. I mean, you know, this is, is a poem that the translation it's an interpretation of a translation of a poem. And uh, it's just, it gives us things to think about and talk about and compare to other things, but there's really no right or wrong about it. It's just what it brings up for each of us. It takes us the whole, it's like a roller coaster. In the beginning of your infants, we are never lost from his days and then he's playing games with us. And then if I translate it to as a human mother, we play games with our infants. We, we love them, but depending on the situation, I mean, even like when they're, we are teaching emotion, play peekaboo and sometimes we make scary faces and sometimes we take it off and laugh and the child learns from that. Right, right. So mother uh, mother plays games with the baby, with the child to, to teach it. And I guess the divine does that with us. But the love is always there. Mm -hmm. And the mother is ready to run to the infant at the slightest need of the infant but we still have to do what is right for the infant which may not be what the infant wants right <laughs> I think we need a simpler poem after this <laughs> well, we can move on if you guys want you want to move on to another one the next one is yeah. short who wants to read it? Is Brother Shankar is back? Yeah, well, he's not really back. I, he's just oh. here to say that the only way I get relief from this is to lie down flat. Okay. And, uh, so uh, I'm going to have to go do that. And Cindy, can you sign us off? Uh, sign on as me and, and sign us off when it's time? Sure. Okay. I'm sorry, folks. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I hope you feel better. Okay. Happens. I feel better. Yeah. I, under, I was overhearing from the other room, I was making a cup of uh, tea that helps ease the situation a little bit. And I was listening to a very lively discussion, so good on you. We were just talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dears. Well, uh, <coughs> well oh. That'll feel better. Hopefully. Thank you. Does anybody want to read this next one? Sure, I can read Cindy. It's only two lines. Okay. <laughs> yeah, easy go. <laughs> humility and compassion. Can true humility and compassion exist in our words and eyes? Unless we know we too are capable of any act. Humility and compassion. Can true humility and compassion exist in our words and eyes unless we know we too are capable of any act? The question mark. I think so. Didn't Brother Shankar mention this one? Yes, he's mentioned but, quite a few times. Well, I'm yes, sorry. and I think it was in yesterday's talk. Yes, I think it, I think we can. Yeah, we are. I have a, a little statue of St. Francis mm -hmm. on, my, on my porch right outside. And I have a glass door so I can see. And yesterday when he was giving the talk, right at that point, I got up to go get a cup of coffee. And I had just gotten near the door and had looked at the St. Francis. And like half a second later, Brother Shankar's started doing this he said saint francis said and i'm i just laughed it was funny kind of one of those uh synchronicity things is that true cindy i heard someone saying that if you have a saint francis statue in the house it's good luck somebody told me sometime 
Well, it, it probably is. I'm not Catholic. Um, it, maybe I think for Catholics, different saints are saints for different things. You know, they so Catholics. I think um, you know will not really pray to the saint, but ask the saint to pray for them. Uh, and but Saint Francis is very much involved with uh, animals and nature and that sort of thing. Okay. So I have him right there where my squirrels and birds are all over the place. And I just really like him anyway. I've always liked him. And, uh, yeah, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, actually, can someone explain what does it mean? Like, I have not attended other sessions. So I don't, I didn't understand the last part. Unless we know we too are capable of any act. What does that mean? So... Like, in order to have true humility, so for example, if we see, you know, like a beggar on the street, right? And, and we're just like, oh, that poor beggar, but believe that like, you know, like that they're kind of, of like an inferior being or that like that can never happen to us then you know it, it it's not and that's the key it's not just compassion it's it's humility and compassion so kind of being able to um realize that you know any and, and, and you know that's just kind of one example but i mean i think for for me what it really kind of comes up to more is more of kind of like the ability to um have compassion for people who do, you know, like, you know, maybe acts that are like, you know, right, you know, that, you know, we would consider wrong, right? Like, you know, harming others, mm -hmm. you know, acknowledging that, you know, that we are capable of committing those acts is, you know, it, it, and, and, and being able to have compassion for people who do those things, I think, because, you know, that's the thing, if, you know, a lot of times, you know, and I, I've, I've definitely done this, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm, I'm capable of doing this, but, but, you know, kind of saying like, oh, I can't believe such and such you hear, you know, on the news, they, you know, there's, you know, crime scene, whatever. And like, you know, I can't believe how, you know, disgusting people are. And, you know, like, that's not, uh, you know, that, that, that's cutting me off from, from having compassion for the, you know, for the, for the living, you know, being that, that, you know, that, that person uh, is and, and just kind of, so, so like, you know, being kind of like, um, self-righteous and, and, and acting like that I'm not capable of committing a terrible act is um, well it's, it's not true humility and, and, and it's also not um, it cuts me off from having compassion for for you know for all beings so that's that's my take on it yeah, I think it's sort of like putting yourself in the other shoes that's how we can be non-judgmental Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, the guna, like Brother Shankar always says, the gunas are there in all of us. And uh, maybe our situation is such that we can sort of suppress the not uh, welcome gunas, whereas the, uh, the other person may be in a position that they are not able to suppress the gunas and they come out. So we are capable of that. But fortunately, maybe we are in a position that we're not acting out what our gunas are creating, the vibration. So that, that's what I guess we need to remember. We are capable of any act, depending on the, the circumstances and what the gunas set in motion. I think the word circumstances that you said, Swayam, is... Um is important because it's easy us for us to say that we would do certain things that are that are bad but not really horrible but there are limits where we say there's no way i would ever do that thing but we really don't know because unless we've been in i mean there are people in the world who have lived through extreme horrible horrible situations um, or events that I can't even imagine. And so 
I know that when I've really been pushed to the wall a few times in my life, I've done things that were out of character, but I've never experienced just some of these horrors that other people have. And so I don't know what I would do. I would hope I wouldn't do something awful. <laughs> um, but if, you know, if we want to talk about the Gunas, the Gunas are responsible for the, the circumstances, the conditions, because it's nothing's in a vacuum. It's not just about me and my practice and how good am I ordinarily. It's like when I'm put in a different situation where I don't have my usual things to fall back on. How am I going to react? And, and to realize that some people just, you know, they, whether it's, whether you believe in karma and you say it's karma, um, but people, some people go through really awful things and, and to say, you know, I would knew, or I wouldn't do that if I were in their situation. It's like people looking down on people who are in poverty or people who are homeless. You know, why don't they get a job? <laughs> that sort of thing. It's, um, yeah. And it's good to suffer some because <laughs> uh, it, 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 it helps you get compassion for other people. It really does help with that. Thank you, everyone. Yes. I agree with you, Cindy. You know, when unless you are in that shoe, it's difficult to understand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, yes, we all were judgmental at one time. And I know many of us are guilty for that, including me. But we have grown. And some of our gunas are in balance. Some people don't have that balance. They're not capable of, like anger, for instance, I wish I could choke that guy. I mean, we all get that feeling, but we don't choke, many of us. But there are others who will really do choke them. <laughs> so the, their gunas are so out of balance. Their kama, raja, gunas. And so maybe we have more sattva gunas, so sap, 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 sap gunas so that we feel it, but we don't act upon it. Right. Anger management, right? So right. some people have different backgrounds. They come from the horrifying situations they've been through. So that makes them do some imbalance, mental imbalance or incapabilities. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, I agree with both of you, all of you. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting too that the, you know, a lot of what everyone just shared about this poem, you know, like the, 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 the one before it, which is kind of like, this was like the uh short version of that one you know <laughs> like like it's like the summary he's like okay if that last poem was too long for you just read this instead and, and you know it's like the same you know pretty much the same the same message but very much uh you know uh refined and more you know kind of just like summarized <laughs> yes yeah it's it's a question so it makes you think yeah. you're right yes yeah that, that that's true I, I that's a good point like i i i've read this before and you know i've heard people refer to you know brother shankar and other people refer to it and i've actually referred to it quoted it many times in different contexts but i actually this was the until this discussion i i never realized that this was actually framed as a, a question i've always kind of framed it as a statement in my mind but it's interesting that the that it is a question. Yeah. That observation. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, like before, I mean, when I first read it, uh, what, what my interpretation was that it means, like I was thinking from uh, like the Krishna says that it's not you who is acting, uh, but it is me who is acting through you. So I thought in that sense that um, because it's God that is acting, and if I think it's me individual who is acting, then the humility and compassion will not be there. Like if I consider myself that I did it, uh, in that case, the humility and compassion would not be there. But if I think, okay, this is God acting from me, if I think that way all the time, then maybe humility and compassion will be there. I mean, initially that was my interpretation, not sure if it is right. Um. 
I was actually going to offer to read a few lines from um, Swami Vivekananda's complete works um, in the chapter on Karma Yoga. The, the head, heading of the chapter is each is great in his own place. And um, he says that it is the most difficult thing in this world to work and not care for the result, to help a man and never think that he ought to be grateful to do some good work and at the same time, never look to see whether it brings you name or fame or nothing at all. And this is where the, the ties in with the poem, the following lines here. Even the most arrant coward becomes brave when the world praises him. A fool can do heroic deeds when the approbation of society is upon him. But for a man to do, constantly do good without caring for the approbation of his fellow men is indeed the highest sacrifice a man can perform. The great um, duty of the householder is to earn a living, but he must take care that he does not do it, do it by telling lies or by cheating or by robbing others. But he must remember that his life is for the service of the God and the poor. But basically, I think this whole chapter is um, sort of follows that theme where anybody can do good anybody. when I guess they're being praised. And, and there's another few lines in there later on that builds on this theme about, um, you know, what this poem says that unless you know that you are capable of anything, you cannot have humility and compassion. Yeah. Thank you, Swam, for sharing that. Yes, thank you. That was I love that. <laughs> and even the greatest coward could be brave. And could you re read that one more time? I just thought that was a great one. Yeah. He says that even the most arrant coward becomes brave when the world praises him. A fool can do heroic deeds when the approbation of society is upon him. But for a man to constantly do good without caring for the approbation of his fellow men is indeed the highest sacrifice man can perform. It's very difficult. Yeah. In practice. It is difficult. You, you know, when you quoted that, and you know, I've, um, I haven't read the whole reading of the Karma Yoga, uh, like completely, but I've, you know, I've read through it before. And, you know, one notion that, you know, comes to mind when I think of karma, the path of karma yoga is the idea of, of being unattached to the fruits of the action. And just like, you know, like having the, like the nine conditions. Uh, and, you know, when I think of like, you know, this idea of like, uh, non, uh, well, I guess you say un unconditional love is the term that they usually use. Right. And, you know, a lot of ways that I think, you know, compassion is um used in, in in our society is very conditional right like okay i can feel compassion for the um you know the orphan child because you know he's an you know orphan child but you know i but you know i can't feel compassion for the murderer because you know he's a murderer right we're kind of putting conditions on Com uh, on our ability, you know, on compassion, right? It's like limiting the compassion. And, you know, what I'm seeing here is like, you know, kind of really by, by acknowledging this, you know, that, that I'm capable of, I guess, um, well, m m you know, not in this lifetime of, of being the, you know, the, the orphan, but, you know, maybe of, 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 of being um, a, a killer, right? And just being like, okay, I have this com uh, unconditional compassion, you know, for, for all, you know, regardless of whether they're this, innocent orphan or if they were you know this convicted killer you know this is kind of like being unconditional kind of in a similar way that um you know the path of karma yoga suggests that um our actions should be like all of our actions so i guess including our ability to have compassion um i'm going to have to excuse myself i have to join the vedanta academy class that begins at nine but it's been a wonderful discussion. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. What about five minutes?
Five more minutes. Yeah. Does uh, anyone have anything else they want to say about this? Or the, the next poem is kind of short too. So mm -hmm. I, I could read it and then we can discuss okay. it and wrap up. Yeah. All right. So page 38, always from the child's hand. Always from the child's hand, the sword should be removed. I think every nation is an infant. Always from the child's hand. Always from the child's hand, the sword should be removed. I think every nation is an infant. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that case. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny like the first time I read it because I, I kind of didn't read it as like line by line it didn't hit me but then the second time I read it it just kind of <laughs> th yeah. that time it tickled <laughs> I, I kind of got it <laughs> it is I have taken pictures of this on my camera and put it on Facebook I love this poem <laughs> and it is just so true see it's so true so powerful, very yeah. powerful, even the two lines, four lines. Yeah, the two lines is very powerful. Especially when it says every nation, especially when you're talking about the leaders, the so-called leaders, <laughs> most of the leaders of countries, of governments in this world are run by infants with behavioral problems <laughs> there are a few adults out there but uh yeah and grown children when they're running around with swords and mm -hmm. mm. yeah i think too i mean it's just like the, the the leaders but also the uh i mean you think of the united states was it 1776 so just you know not even 500 years right and um you know looking at the civilizations that we know of right um that and that you know it, it's just they're they're you know that that that's really you know two two three hundred years is i guess that's that's not you know that's really nothing when you really compare it to the uh wider scale of known human history and you know, the scale of the earth. And even that is, I mean, if you think, you know, if you really believe that the universe, you know, God is, is infinite, it's like, you know, even 6 billion years is, 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 is kind of nothing compared to infinity, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we truly, our country truly is an infant. <laughs> so, yeah. I never thought I would see something with the, the way things are in a first world country like United States. <laughs> oh my God, am I really seeing this, hearing this you know, every day? You're not, a, you're not alone. <laughs> I, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> every day I question myself, I thought I was in the first world. I just don't think so. I was wrong. <laughs> How can I be so wrong? It's proving now. <laughs> Temporary, everything is <laughs> really proves it. yeah it's, it's it's kind of funny too that you mentioned that because you know i have some friends who moved here you know so they've lived in the united states for a couple of decades now but he, you know i have a friend who moved here from uh, uh varanasi and you know, yeah. he says a lot of the same things he's like you know about how it's funny you know what what you know because he was like you know when i lived in india you know i thought that everyone in the united states was going to be so happy because they have all this material yeah and, uh, here and I couldn't believe how happy everyone is. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> and I, 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 and you know, kind of on a similar note, like I have an uh, an uncle in the Philippines in Manila who um, is you know pretty involved in the, pol the political situation over there, and you know, yes, there is a chaos. Talking. Yeah, they have there, but but he's talking whenever he talks about the United States, he's kind of I mean. <laughs> He doesn't outright, you know, mock it, but you could definitely tell he's holding back his, his laughter. <laughs> and like, he's kind of like, what? 
I have lived 50 years. This is my 51st year. I, when I came in 70, it was much better. We were progressing. I thought, yeah. oh, this is much better. I see the progress. But now we went backwards again into 1660, maybe 100 years backwards or something. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. This poem is really, truly represents the world so well, so well. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe it's just too it's to get like, you know, think that this country is still an infant, right? It's like, we're just going through, it, it, it's it's terrible twos, right? And it's like, you know, you say it's like, like your three-year-old, you know, throwing a tantrum like a three-year-old. So maybe that's what, it's, that's what we're seeing here, you know, some growing pains. <laughs> Definitely. We'll see what happens. I, I Some people feel, and I, I'm trying to feel like we're at a, a good transition point and whenever there's a big change, there's it's not always pretty, and this is not pretty. I but like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I feel like Durga is in White House now. <laughs> <laughs> Telling Brother Shankara one day, a few weeks back, I think Durga is in White House. It's just entered. <laughs> now we have to finish the action. You know, right. work has to be done now. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of work. Karma is at work now, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I, I voted and I just feel like I want to sleep and get up after January 20th. I don't want to get up. I don't want to see anything. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 But things will change. And so I'm hoping for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's interesting, though, because it's like, you know, I've heard this idea of like, you know, the process of you know, create, you know, creation can't happen without the destruction, right? So if the old is, is, is there, you know, it needs to, it needs to be destroyed for, in order for the new to, to, to exist, right? So it's yeah, like, you know, something new is being created right now. We just have to destroy <laughs> her. Yep. The old has to be destroyed, you know, I don't, I don't think we, we need to really do anything besides let, let it kind of, it seems like it's doing it by itself. You know, like you said, Durga, or you know, the other other forces are coming in and doing it for us. Yeah. <laughs> and the elements that don't want to be destroyed, they don't want the change, and they're the ones that are kind of getting in the way. They're you know, they're the ones who are being destroyed in larger numbers. That element because they're like, no, no no change, no progress. We want things to be the way we envision them. And um, that can't be, it just, it can't ever be, you know. Yeah. It's an illusion to think that things can stay a certain way. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, like, as I was mentioning, you know, I referenced my, my friend who moved here from uh, Varanasi and, you know, one of his interpretations of, of the, uh, you know, meetings of the Bhagavad Gita and the Mahabharata war is like this idea of the old versus new and like, you know, the old being, you know, the large dark forces and the new and Arjuna, you know, fighting for the new. And Cindy, what you just said, yeah, it's like, just like the old always tries to keep the same way. Keep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the veil, you know, it's the veil is not removed from their divinity. They, their, their divinity is so toxic. It's just layer by layer, like onions, you have to peel it off. So it may take many lifetimes. Some of us already peeled off all those. So we're here in a spiritual co congregation, but others are there well, it's, you know, their, their divinity is covered by the toxins, you know, to remove those toxins, it may cause some destruction. Mm -hmm. So it may go through the cycle of destruction, like so many other wars we have seen in the past and revolutionary thing so i guess that's what we're seeing now yeah and and i guess too like the best we could do to really help with that is to just focus continue what we're doing right so like you know we're because we're creating the new here by coming together exactly. studying texts such as this and the other yeah. texts that we study here and 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 we're creating a new uh like a new consciousness i guess you know mm -hmm. and and you know, letting the old kind of <laughs> deteriorate. <laughs> We're swimming through the whales. <laughs> yeah. Reaching the shore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. We just have to pray. Pray for the 
whatever is going to happen. Yeah. Stay in boat, stay informed, but also don't get obsessed. Just yeah. stay don't get balance. Good. Oh, balance is so important. You know, I feel like it's important to stay for me personally to stay informed about things, but not to get dragged into it. Not to get you know, to remember that there's there have always been horrible things and going on. And a lot of us have been lucky if we haven't most of our lives we haven't had to experience it, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been going on. It's just we haven't been there. And you know, but there's always beauty too. And you can't I feel like you know, some people try to go all for the beauty and you know, that's a great, that's a great rest. It's a rest place, but to try to stay there, you can't stay there and can't stay there either. You have to just, it's all going on. Oh. Well, it's, it, it's also too, it's like the poem we read earlier, the, the long poem, um, let me scroll back up. There was a line that, water. that I, I, I have just, you know, the, the, I have just peeled the skin of the potato, yeah. the potato and you are still contemplating its worth. Yeah. Sweetheart indeed. There are wonderful nutrients in all for God made everything. So kind of the Cindy, what you were just saying about the the beauty is like, you know, that you know, there's there's nutrients in 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 a lot of this hostility and and yeah. uh, you know, because yeah, it's like, you know, it's in you know, God it, God created it. It's all within this existence. So there 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 it's in there too, right? And it's just the um yeah, it, it takes a lot of, I guess, practice to, to at least maybe see it and not get sucked up into the... It does take practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things we learn, or I have, through Vedanta and coming to the center and over many years. And um, yeah, it's made a big difference for me. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's all about I guess you know like being I guess was like not attached or detached to like being present with it but not getting you know too you know even feeling being able to feel the you know the, the you know the, like the good bad and ugly right I think that was like the movie mm-hmm. right it's like you gotta, right. You know, learning to kind of take that all in and, and not be uh, overwhelmed right yeah and if you get overwhelmed just to go away from that for a while <laughs> I mean you know we can't. I've had to learn to not be hard on myself when I can't, when I do get overwhelmed. Because yeah. I'm like, well, I'm supposed to, I've been practicing and, you know, we're not machines, you know, we're human beings. And uh, we let everything go underneath our skin and get to the heart. So we just have to, you know, let it go out of the, away from our skin. We can see it, watch it, listen to it, but we can't let it go underneath our skin. If it goes, then that's the danger. Yeah. Vedanta helps. This okay. congregation really helps a lot to me. It does. It uh, just uh, stays off of other things and then focused on what we really want to learn, learn and achieve in life. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Cindy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. I guess it's probably, oh, it's 908. Uh, 908, yep. Yeah. Um, want to say that. Brother Shankar wasn't feeling well, but hopefully he's feeling better. And uh, yeah. uh, before we close, I actually have a question. Uh, Brother Shankara, he uh, like Navratri has started and he asked uh, that uh, you can chant, but can uh, someone tell me what do we chant actually? Like, uh, what it's Jai Shri Durga, uh, Jai Shri Durga, okay. If you want five minutes or 10 minutes, 10 minutes is like, I think it's a 60, uh, 600. Each minute is 60 times. He said every second, yes, we do that. So you do 600 a day and then he would record those. and send yeah, it. You, can, you can do as many as you want or not, but if you want to um, email him and, and make a pledge, he includes that in the information that he sends to Swami Sarvadevananda in California, who is the um, actual head of our center. For our, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do, uh, is there a time uh, when you chant this or? Uh, no, uh, it is it for personal? It's just personal. Just anytime you want to is, okay. is fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks. Sure. Uh, hi, Ma.
Oh, uh, sure. Thanks, Liam. Cindy, you want to close it with a prayer? Uh, somebody else do it. Oh. <laughs> do you want to do it? Uh, oh, I just, I just want to say, just for record keeping, so next time, I guess we, we will pick up at uh, No One Knows His Name on page... I forgot, I think 39. I made Yeah. Okay, so okay. No One Knows His Name, page 39. Okay, okay thanks. Okay. Jaime, do you have a little prayer you'd like to say? Uh, I haven't prepared anything other than warm. <laughs> so we can all probably say warm. Okay. Unless you have anything special. I don't write it on the top of my head. I just don't, but maybe I'll have something next time if, if it's needed. But we can we can own together. So oh, oh. Namaste, everybody. Cindy, I have something here. I could read it right. that might end the prayer. Okay, that would be fine. Dear Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from death to immortality. Lead us from darkness to light. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everybody. See you uh, next time we see you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Hi, Kat. Hi. Hi, Hama. Bye, Dr. Shankar. Now, everyone. Bye. <laughs>